all right guys welcome back to a monthly recap so january 2022 in review right january 2022 in review this is how the month was looking i mean you know for a month where we kind of struggled uh and well and and, and and you know where things were really slow it doesn't look that bad at the end of it you know um but what i will say is that the hotter markets definitely can spoil you if you allow it to and so you know we, we are seeing those big green days uh big green trades big momentum stocks so consistent so frequent you know we can get spoiled and so when things slows down it starts to feel you know very uh dry and and um, some some people may even use the word boring. I wouldn't go that far, of course. Um, but this is how the month was looking, right? We started off with a bigger red day, down 700. Uh, we bounced back a little bit on Tuesday, and then another $700 red day. So these two red days were the same red days, um, the way how I look at it in terms of the setups I took. Poor setups, poor trades, just overall not good business. Um, and the the disappointing thing not not to get too much into last month but at the end of last month um we had uh hold on what am i doing here towards the end of last month um december uh december 2020 right i had some bigger red days that were very similar 987 and 650 so all four of those red days were the same red day and uh you know it's one of those things where we got to be very careful of right um getting sloppy in a hotter market now it was four days that was stretched out over we could say uh two weeks but it was definitely avoidable if i am trading at my best if i am keeping a clear head at all times if i'm not letting the hotter market get to me right um, so those are, are some of the, the earlier things I want to point out, right? Um, becoming a little sloppy in a hotter market because follow through is so strong. Be not because we're seeing stocks going, it means we can buy bad setups and still expect them to work, right? We still want to trade a quality at all times. So that's a quick thing to touch on on these two days, right? Those are the two biggest lessons for me there. Um, but from there, you know, we, we ease it down, we slow it down. Um, we do get a decent green day here on Monday for 493. So, you know, two decent green days, 490, 493. Uh, smaller red day, 253. So, this wasn't a bad week. We're going to be three or five um, ending green. Uh, but that's definitely a bit of a bigger red day than we, what we would have wanted, right? Now, week three. Uh, you know, two green days. Um, and we're basically flat on the week. Not, not much progress. We go four for five in week four. Um, you know, we do see some progress, right? 268, 195, and uh, down 77. So if you're a beginner trader, you're now checking me out, right? Make make sure to check out all the monthly recaps. There's big, big green months, small green months, red, red months, um, and big red months too, right? It all averages out. So check everything out, right? If you guys want to see what I'm about, what I do here on a daily basis, um, feel free, right? It's all there. You can go back uh, years um, and see what, I, what I've been able to do over the time. So here we are, right? Total gain slash loss of now 125 on the month, right? Now, one thing I will say about trading is that it's not seasonal. It's more cyclical. And so what that means is that we'll be getting cycles at different points in time, right? Um, and it's not uh, linear, it's not consistent. Let's say summer of last year might be good, summer of this year might not be good, and vice versa for different times of the year. Q4 last year was pretty good. Q4 of this year can be pretty good or it can be bad, right? It all depends, right? And so the market has its own timing on that front, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, but in January, I'm going to be down 125.82. So basically, a flat month for me. Uh, average daily loss six dollars. This is a number that I'm pretty proud of, um, because when I compare this month to some of my worst months, I mean this right here is absolutely impressive. Um, there's been months where I've averaged, you know, down uh, 500 
I'll, I'll have to check, but down hundreds, down hundreds of dollars per day, which just was not good. And I think I did a really good job here. Only 8,000 shares traded per day, down from my average last year of 30,000 shares. And then the year before, 60,000 shares. So this is me basically not really trading, you know. Uh, average losing trade, $45. Average winning trade still up there uh, in, in, in terms of the green side of things. Not quite the two to one. Uh, but it's sixty dollars, right? Uh, winning trades forty-two percent, so the average, the accuracy is definitely down uh, about nine eight percent um, so far. Losing trades up 57 percent. Largest gain two fifty-two, largest loss three sixty-four. This is a category I gotta be careful with right here. This category, right? Gotta be careful because I like I like to have a two to one in every aspect, right? So I gotta be careful uh, with those bigger losses, cutting losses quick, being careful with share size, that kind of thing. Uh, average per share gain, uh, zero, right? Average per, per uh, average trade gain slash loss, minus 82 cents. Trade P&L standard deviation, 78.30. Profit factor, 0.97. Average hold time winning trades. 1 minute 28 seconds average hold time losing trades 1 minute and 1 second and so you know wanting to hold my winning trades longer and cut my losing trades quickly i think these metrics will balance out a lot more as we do pick back up um max consecutive wins only four versus max consecutive losses is eight so we definitely got some improvement to do as time progresses uh performance by day of the week monday we're down 244 Wednesday were down 456. Friday were down 177. Wednesdays and, and Mondays have been my worst days last year. So this is a, 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 a something I want to take note of and be careful of. Now there are traders who will say, hey, you know, Wednesday is my worst day. Friday is my worst day. Um, so I wouldn't trade on those days. That's not something that I would do. I wouldn't go to that length because there's been big red days on Wednesdays. And guess what? There's been some really big green days on Wednesdays. But I don't know what it is that it, it just happens that on those days I perform a little bit less than what I usually do. It's weird. Um, but I would never stop trading on a particular day because each day for me is its own entity. Each day offers a different set of opportunities and a different set of challenges. It's always up to us as the traders to capitalize and do a good job. So I will never blame a particular day or time frame really. Um, it all comes down to strategy and how good you are, right? Because there's traders who are profitable at all times of the day, whether pre-market, after hours, the lunch hour, the open. Um, but it all comes down to strategy and skill, right? So performance by hour of the day, uh, pre-market, I'm down 114 earlier around 7 a.m., down 30 bucks around 8 a.m. And between 9 and 10.30, I'm actually down 621, which is the area where I'm usually mostly in the green. So what this tells me is that I've, I've been aggressive early around that 935, 940 area and not seeing follow through. So I'm down 620 uh, around 10 a.m. I do get a little bit better, um, 164, 131, 12 p.m. Uh, I'm down 132. And it seems like I got some money there around um, 1, you know, 420. So I believe this was um, one of those bigger green days where we had some action into the afternoon. So, yeah one down 125.82 on the month now could i had uh took off the entire month yes what would i had what would that have done for me it would have made my metrics much more pretty right um but right now you know i i, I know i spoke a lot last year about metrics but i'm, I'm coming to realize that although trading is a little bit math mathematical right metrics don't really matter um I don't want to sound contradicting here. It does matter, but it doesn't really matter um, in, in some sense, right? Now I'll, I'll explain that, right? Because for me, one of the biggest things is that, hey, I wanted to improve my accuracy, right? Now, my accuracy could have been higher if I took less trades. If I had more no trade days, I would have less red days, right? Now, there's an opportunity cost and an opportunity lost and you know when we talk about hey 
if I trade through the market, what am I gaining? And if I take off, what am I losing, right? I think when I trade through the market here, I gain more of a sense of discipline. I gain more of a, of a feel for that hotter market and why we do want to always cherish it and do our best in it and excel in it. Um, so if I'm off and I'm away from the market, I feel like I'm missing that, right? Um, yes, my metrics will look more pretty, but I think I'll lose some of the substance that I need to, to take with me into the next hot cycle, right? So there's always a trade-off. There's always opportunity will always cost, right? So I'm willing to gain the necessary experience now, even if it means that my accuracy might be lower at the end of the year. I, it does not bother me at all. My gains will speak for themselves over, over the weeks and the months. So I'll scroll down in case anybody wants to see performance by intraday duration. Um, and we'll move on to the next tab. All right, so if I stayed away from the, the month in, uh, altogether, I'd have been at zero, 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 versus I'm down 125. You know, is there a big difference between being zero and 125? I mean, it's virtually the same thing at this point, you know, where I'm at with my career, with trading, it's virtually the same thing, right? Um, this is a field where, where we get into the thousands, tens, ten thousands, and so... And, and eventually, I, I'll know I'll get up there to 100K and then we'll, we'll, we'll push over the next few months and years to a quarter million and then half a million and then a million. And so when we look at $125, you know, it's, it's, it's not that significant at this point, right? It matters, but it's not that significant in the overall picture, right? So uh, price, performance by price, under $2.00. Uh, we're not really well. We're green 124 between two and five. We're down 630. So this is telling me between stocks between two and five dollars into this February month. Stocks like A A, A L J J that we had today. I want to be very careful of right. Just a quick look, not to get too sidetracked. Uh, A L J J stocks like this. Although the daily chart are looking really good, I want to be very careful of it. Um, and I think I did a good job of that today, avoiding it. Right, stocks like ALJJ. Um, between five and ten, I'm, I seem to be doing all right. Between ten and twenty, I'm down three twenty-three. So I gotta avoid the higher price range, and I think this is because of the inconsistency with the uh, the spreads being tight and the volume being high enough for me to get those good scalp trades. I'm getting chopped out, getting destroyed against the spreads. So when the stocks are too cheap and the rate the range is too tight, I gotta be careful. When the stocks are too expensive and the range is too big, I got to be careful. So it seems like 5 to 10 is that sweet spot right now. Uh, but even in this range, I still got to be careful regardless uh, to make sure that all the criteria are checking out before I do take a trade, right? So instrument, BBLG, I did the best on that one, 576, T TKLF, INDO, uh, v i n e p i x y. A lot of you guys will, will, will uh, see a lot of these stocks here are familiar. I M M X. I'm down 439. N T R B 266. C E L Z. Uh, what's that? C E L Z 188. And the list goes down a little bit more. And and some of these stocks were good stocks. Stocks that I should have done well on. You know, S B E V. I think I remember being pretty good, but I just did not perform well. So market behavior. Uh, performance by the SPY movement, when the SPY is down 1% to 2%, I'm down 600. Uh, when we're between 0 and minus 1%, I'm up 15, 1,100 um, and 0. And these metrics here I don't think has too much, have too much of a uh, connection. Um, and this is when we, towards the end of the video, I'll clear the stats. I mean, I'll, I'll do it right now. I'll clear the stats so you guys can see, um, you know, what it looks like here. But... I don't think there's too much of a correlation to it because I'll be green in all the areas. Um, and of course, between zero and one percent. Well, maybe. Well, okay. So it seems like when we're flat, right? Yeah, it's okay. So we'll we'll go with that. Yeah. So it seems like when we're flat, we're doing our best. So between zero and one percent. That's interesting. Between zero and one percent, uh, we're doing well. And between zero and it being down one percent, we're also doing well. But I think this is, and, and, 
I think this is because for more most market days we're not volatile. Uh, we are just between zero and and so yeah, this stat I think is a little skewed. I would say ninety percent of days the stocks, the the stock market, is between this range right here, right? These two cat these two um, levels. So I think it would be a little unfair because how, how often are we up over two percent, down more than two percent, or between the one and two percent range? It's usually slow and steady gains over the days. But it's a little hard to tell. Maybe I could deep dive into this more, pay more attention to it, right? But definitely for what the metric is showing, uh, when we're flat is when I'm doing the best, right? Performance by SPY opening gap. For those of you who might want to see that outside range. Um, yeah, so moving on, win-loss expectation. Um, well... I, I need to filter back. I, I forgot. Let me filter back here. Uh, hold on. Let's go back. Um, there we go. Right. Let's filter back. So, but, well, okay. There we go. This is much better. Let's filter back and take another look before we move on. Yeah, so between the market being uh, flat to the upside, I'm also red. So, you know, it's it just a testament of it being a little slower, um, but green on this side over here. Right, so we definitely got to keep improving, keep working, keep pushing. Right, I almost went ahead with the uh, metrics uh, for the entire you know career, but so this is how the month started off. We had those two bigger red days. This is where we had the four hundred dollar green day. We bounced back, and then boom, seven hundred dollar red day again. And from there, we fought, fought, fought. We got back to break even, slightly green, and we ended down one twenty five. So I had mentioned. That last day was going to be a crucial day for me. Hey, can I come in and have a green day? Didn't quite get it done until we ended slightly red. Uh, I mean, like I said, you know, it's not a, a, a market where I'm going to force a green day and, and, and do something that I can get myself in trouble. Hey, if I'm green, I'm red. Um, and I've, I've learned a lot uh, of this stuff from past experiences. And even watching traders like Ross, when it's our birthdays, when it's our first day of trading going live, when it's maybe an anniversary, when it's uh, all these significant days, maybe it's the first day of the month, the last day of the month. Um, maybe this day is a day that determines if we're green or not on the month or the year. Do I want to do something outside of the ordinary to try and be green? The answer is no. If you do that, you get yourself in trouble, right? So this is the win-loss comparison, uh, win-loss ratio, right? We've made 3,900. Um, and we lost 4,000, right? So we're down a little bit. And it's always crazy when I see these numbers. You know, I didn't think I made this much money, right? But between all those red and green trades, um, days where I'm starting green going lower or starting red and coming back green, the, the money moves fast. The money moves in the market. The money moves. If you were to ask me, I would have told myself, uh, I think I made like 1,600 and lost like 1,700. But when you go through these individual days, and you see how much money is moving, you start to be amazed, right? I mean, this was such a flat month, and this amount of money kind of moved through my account. It's kind of crazy. I mean, much less for those of you using big size, you know, real size, like real, real share size. Win-loss versus days. Uh, we're pushing 18 minutes, so I think we're doing all right on time. Win-loss versus days. Um, so we have 11 green days to 9 red days. I mean, you know, things are so slow. It felt like, um, I don't know, I feel like I, I felt like I had more red days than nine days. I don't know. You know, it's always weird. Uh, but 1,800 in gains, 1,900 in losses. Average daily gain, 169. Average uh, losing day, 221, right? Average daily loss, 221. Daily volume, 9,500 on the green days versus 8,000. So I did trade less on the red days, but I still managed to have bigger losses, right? So, uh, by a little bit, not by a lot. Uh, average trade gain, $21 on green days versus minus 29 on the red days. Total number of trades, 86 on the green days, which is a good thing, right? So on the green days, I, I did much better in my, my accuracy um versus the red days as we can see right here so trading less on the red days is always the way to go and trading more on the green days for those of you who are in who are watching me 
um, you know, keep 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 tuning in. That's my advice to you guys. Anybody who's enjoying the show, keep tuning in, man. Keep tuning in. I'll say it like it's a joke. The the green days are on the horizon, right? Action will speak louder than words, and when the time comes, I will back up my words. I always will, right? I always will, right? I always will until the very end. So keep tuning in, you know, just be patient, just like I am, and we'll see those beautiful green days rolling in and out like clockwork. But we have to be patient. We have to do the right set of things now to prepare for when it comes around so that we're ready to go, you know? Uh, so, um, average losing trade, well, losing trades, 51% on the, uh, green days, 66% on the red days, which isn't good. Average winning trade, $76 on the green days. And we do have a two to one here, right? We're making 76 versus losing 30 on the, uh, red days. I'm making 30 versus losing 60. So the, the, the the metric is reversed you know it's reversed so i got to be very careful on those days that are slower right? very careful largest gain 258 largest loss 187 for the green days on the red days largest gain 105 largest loss 364 so that's not too good um yeah uh average position mfe so we have these metrics here and the liquidity tab I don't have because I don't have the gold. Uh, I pay for silver, which is about $29 a month. The gold package is $50 a month. I'll upgrade to gold one of these days. Um, but for now, we'll keep it at, at silver. I think it shows us enough. And, and uh, gold, I believe, also captures um, com commissions in the trades, right? And we talk about gross versus net. So, um, what else are we uh, missing here? Compare, um, let's see, tab breakdown, advanced. The compare, you know, when we talk about month over month, when uh, month over month, week over week. And, and so what I'll do here, um, I don't know if we need to look at the compare yet. I mean, you know, we'll be comparing this month to last month, right? January to uh, December. I'm always talking about the previous month, right? Um, but let's clear this out and give you guys a quick overview of the overall metrics um, uh, as to where I'm at since starting live in May 1st of 2020. It's been a decent ride, right? We're at 59K. Uh, this year, we'll definitely be looking to cross over 100K. Um, since starting, I've been averaging 140 a day. Um, my average winning trade 63 average losing trade 38 5000 trades log average of uh 48% for winning trades 50% for losing trades so we still got to keep working on this like i mentioned um but right now i think we're still sacrificing for the greater good when we talk about trading through a slower market All right so only you as the trader can make that decision largest gain 1600 largest loss 767 this, I believe, was from a halt resumption. Got blazed. Man, those losses, man. Uh, average hold time winning trade. I think we're starting to see a gap here, right? We're starting to see a gap. Average losing time, uh, average hold time losing trades is down, right, at 340. I think we're seeing a gap there. I think we're seeing a gap. All right, so the overall metric, I'm still red pre-market, which I'm not happy about. I'm down 752. I will. I think I'll be able to reverse this this year. If I if I'm not, then maybe my my entire pre market experiment will be a failed experiment, and if it is, I wouldn't I will not trade pre market moving forward again. Um, but we'll see. I, I I'm confident that I can do it. Um, I, I have no reason to to not be. Uh, but as you guys will see, between nine thirty and ten o'clock, here's where I have my biggest gains, and it kind of dwindles down as the day progresses. And this is largely in part because. I usually step away from the market, I, I would say, as the day goes on. It's hard to stay focused. It's hard to stay at peak performance. We're not doing a physical job, but concentrating for hours at a time is really hard. We can get distracted. Before you know it, you're on YouTube, you're trading, a stock moves up, you blame yourself for not watching um, as, in, as being as diligent, right, with a watchful eye. 
you start to get frustrated. There's a lot of things that come with trading late into the day. I think for me, trading two hours is good and then coming back at different times uh, and checking in to see if something is starting to move. Because a lot of these days, what happens is that the timing is good. I come, maybe I sit here for five minutes, something starts to move, I'm right on time. I get a good uh, opportunity, a good trade. I did take one after hour trade or maybe two after hour trades. Uh, and this is where we'll see 312 but definitely goes down as the time goes on. But yeah, so Wednesdays, as I mentioned, Wednesdays and Mondays, I don't know why, but I don't do as well on those days. Tuesday, my best day, Thursday, and then Friday following up. Um, some of the stocks you guys will remember, performance by volume, um, we're doing well between 5 and 10, 10 and 20, and then uh, 2 and 5. If we start to get more stocks from 50 cents moving up, this range will start to increase as well. Above 50, you guys are seeing I'm having a hard time. This is like stocks like DWAC and some of the other ones that, that get really expensive and, and the spreads are much bigger. But I think if, it, if under the right circumstances, I can do well in that range. Uh, but yeah, so performance by volume traded. Seems like the more volume I'm trading on a stock, the better I'm doing and the more opportunities instrument leds isig i'm so disappointed that i had that big thousand dollar loss or isig could have been a strong number two right here uh but anyhow it's mosy expr btx btx is a really good one went all the way to fifty dollars uh pay attention here right mosy and myos very interesting right uh, XTNT, LGVN, SOS. On the red side, MARA. JSPR was a stock I should have been green on. I, I still so badly would want to go back and have another chance at this stock, man. But, you know, we can only move forward with the lesson. LMFA. Some of you guys will have these same stocks on your green side as well, you know. Um, and then maybe vice versa. It depends on how you did on the day, but you know those of you who are really killing it i think you guys will have some of these on the green side as well so we're always aspiring to get to those higher levels we we, we, we we're looking at you guys as motivation right to keep pushing uh movements by the spy we had looked at this earlier win loss expectation and i wanted to touch on this right here um let's go to um the zoom all right let's zoom in here Let's zoom in on this equity curve. There we go. Now, when we talk about my equity curve, there's been a lot of sideways momentum, right? Look at this right here from um, July 30th of 2020. I was at 16K essentially to, uh, what was that? September um, 22nd, right? I only made 2000 between those three months, right? Ah, uh, August, September, between the end of July all the way to September, I only made 2000. And then if we want to extend this range from July all the way to uh, 2021, I was basically sideways. That was me being sideways for basically six months straight. So when we have this right here, this this blip of me going sideways, you know, it's why, the, it's why I put out that video that said, don't panic, right? Do not panic. Do not sell out your strategy that you've been working on for years, months, that's been consistent. What you want to do if you want to be more averse is you keep the strategy you have and you also build on something else, right? Um, that's what I'm looking forward to doing. That's what I'm working on behind the scenes when we talk about going short on some of these higher cap stocks. There's things we can work on without a doubt. And so why throw away a strategy that can give us $60,000 you know, over two years, right? And so can we have another strategy that can add to this and maybe something completely different that can give us more and, and we have both? Of course, and that's what we want to do, right? And so we don't panic, we endure and we start to see the next move. And there's some smaller areas where here of sideways consolidation. Look at this area here, right? Sideways. And I will say, was all of this a testament to slower markets? No. A lot of it was a testament of me needing to improve and be better with my trade style, right? 
uh, we had a, a sideways patch here um, going back from uh, April of 2021 to let's say the the entire month basically then we get a bit of a push right we go from uh 29,000 up to 31,000 and then we go sideways again so from May 7th to about May 24th so you know basically two months of just like slower progress we did go up but slower progress sideways sideways and then look at what happens as we get into June from 31 big jump 35 and you know June 16th we go to 37 and June 29th we go to 38 and from the 29th of June what do we see more sideways from the 29th of June uh, to July 15th we're sideways then we get a bit of a push uh, and we start to move up a little bit more consistently in this range um, into August September sideways again well look at what ha this is one of my better hot streaks you know right this right here is one of my better hot streaks this is in fact i think it might have been my best hot streak since starting this this hot streak was good i started live in may 2020 and then i went to set to sixteen thousand, right and Ju july of this this year was my best month since going live seven thousand dollars july 2020 december of 2021 could have rivaled that or been better but i had a lot of big losses i wasn't as efficient along the way and i was using more share size i was using twice the share size back in 2020 i will mention i will say that um so october 2021 well what was that september 2021 we're sideways we're up then we're down a little bit here we go from uh 45 right we go down if i can get the bottom there if it's gonna give it to me here we go to 44 now we go up to 46 and we come back down to 45 so we're sideways between september 21st and october 22nd dwac phun hits boom hot streak we rip we rip we rip we work we work we work we go from 45 up to 60 so fifteen thousand dollars in that hot streak right there pretty impressive so once again this hot streak rivals the very first hot streak that i had and look at my equity curve now sideways this is nothing new it's nothing i haven't seen before even if it lasts you know six months i would hope it does not i would hope i'm, I'm a much better trader for it to that you know maybe it does four months instead of six and i would be happy with that because I, I still was able to improve on something you know um so we'll see right don't panic right let's keep working man let's keep working let's keep fighting this right here was this drop right here this drawdown and what i noticed towards the end of the last hot streak was my cumulative drawdowns were getting bigger i i they were getting bigger i was trading way too sloppy. i think the share size wasn't even a problem I was trading too sloppy. Down 827, 865, down uh 450, down 1100, down 1100 again. I made back the money, then down 1100. And then boom uh you know, into this new year we take a big drawdown as well. So this is what we got to be careful of. This increasing to this side we got to cancel out and get those drawdowns back to a minimum get them tight like how it was right here you know back here i had one of 1400 but you can see it was a little bit more tight not as frequent right boom 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 in these, these this right here alone let's round it up to a thousand right one two three four five you know 5k 5k in drawdowns that could have been in profits and when i say december november could have could have rivaled seven thousand for my best month it definitely could have had i been a little bit better right so that's where i'm gonna end this one guys let's keep pushing let's keep working you guys know me you guys know my mo right the mission objective to keep working to keep grinding we don't stop we won't stop we fall down a hundred times we get back up 101 we fall down ten thousand times we get back up twenty thousand times right no matter the, the amount we just keep pushing we keep going 
we keep grinding we keep being relentless right let's keep be let's continue to be relentless let's keep fighting uh and we will get there right we will get there we will improve these numbers we will be better we can do this All right so that's where i'm going to end it off guys it's been relentless trader it's been a good one and i am of course signing out